I'm ready if you're ready. Will you watch, you're gonna watch, unless you watch the, the room and let folks in? Okay, good. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Um, on behalf of Chiwanki, I want to um, greet you for this special East Side Campus preview of Camp Chiwanki for Girls. And we're here tonight to highlight the new campus and the girls camp programming that will happen in 2021. So my name's Nancy Kennedy and I'm the Executive Vice President at Chiwanki and I'm here with my esteemed colleague, Emily. Hi everyone, my name is Emily Bellhurst and I am the Director of Camp Chiwanki for Girls. I'm so excited to be with you all tonight to talk about girls camp. Um, and I'll also introduce you to the rest of the team. We have uh, Leslie Hunter, our family liaison. Hi, Leslie. Charlie Fear, the director of Camp Chwanky for Boys. Jen Adams is with us, the director of outdoor programs. And Colin McGow, the director of marketing and communications. Um, tonight, we're going to um, lead you through a program. I'm going to talk a little bit about who we've been and a little about who we are. And then Emily's going to lead us through program updates. And you'll see a new Eastside campus tour. We'll have some closing remarks, some thank yous, and a time for Q&A. Um, so let's get to it. Colin, are we on the... Here we go. <laughs> we need a little song and interlude, song and dance interlude while we wait. Um, okay, well, well, everyone, we have passed our 20th year of programming for girls, honoring a very proud history of lifelong learning in nature. Ever growing and expanding to meet the needs of campers, 2021 marks a moment for all of us that's really big. So it's gonna be the summer when we will welcome everyone to the permanent home of Camp Chiwanki for Girls on Chiwanki Neck. Next slide, Cullen. It is a new home and we'll have new opportunities to be sure. New spaces to fill with songs and laughter and friendship and good memories. But still, it's a camp that brings forward the heart of a mission and spirit that has beaten every single summer of girls camp since its beginning. And this is what has always been true and will be true for 2021. The Camp Chiwanki for Girls, through excellent programming and positive role models and loving support, encourages campers to discover what's possible within each one of them to know and explore, to be and to think and to speak in their particular identity as a girl. Camp Chuanki for Girls draws outward and celebrates every child's authentic voice and reminds them that they are, each and every one of them, essential to our community at camp and the community in the world. And Emily is going to talk to us about how that happens. Thank you so much, Nancy. What an incredible legacy to be building from. Um, thank you, Colin, you can go to the next slide. I feel so privileged to work with this amazing group of people, uh, Jen Adams and Charlie Fear, uh, because the heart of where we are as a camp and where we're going as a camp is that we are essentially the same camp, that the boys camp, the girls camp, and our leadership expeditions, formerly known as wilderness trips, are all aligned around the same community values and same community norms. So it's been a really incredible opportunity, the bringing of Girls Camp 2 with CASA to Chiwanki Neck for us to look closely at all of our programs and take their strengths, take what makes them amazing and build upon those things um, so that we can bring all of our programs under the same Camp Chiwanki umbrella. Um, particularly, I've been working very closely with these two in thinking about how our daily schedule at camp can be as similar as possible as we share new resources on the neck, including the farm and the challenge course. Um, 
boys camp and girls camp are also going to be bringing the activities that we offer into closer alignment with each other. So greater equity across the programming. Similarly, we've taken a really close look at the role that cabin trips play at not only girls camp, but at boys camp and how they can be uh, an incredible tool to prepare our campers to step up into that next level of doing a leadership expedition. So this moment of girls camp coming to Chihuahua has been the catalyst of an incredible sort of uh, rebirth of Camp Chihuahua as a more cohesive and more aligned unit. So it's been a pleasure working with them and we can't wait for 2021 together. Next slide. So what is going to be happening in the summer of 2021? Well, the same incredible girls camp magic that happens every summer. We have opened enrollment for our programs for summer of 2021. We are enrolling our Puffin program, which is our 10 day program for campers who are between the ages of eight and 11. It's a fabulous introduction to an overnight camp experience. Uh, we are also enrolling our full session. So we're enrolling for campers ages 10 all the way up to 15 for three weeks on campus. These, this experience is for campers who are ready for that next adventure, and it's campers who fall into the age brackets of herons, owls, and ospreys. So we will have a full range of girls campers coming to the next, next summer. Next slide. What will you be doing here while you're at camp? Well, you're going to be doing the same things that we did every summer up at Fourth Debs Canigue Lake, plus some more exciting things. So woodworking and carving has been an incredible part of our programming. You can see in that photo there, the wonderful Ken Wise, who's been a huge part of woodworking through the history of Girls Camp. And that, that legacy will continue on Chewanky Neck with access to even more materials and supplies. We will also get to access the incredible farm, Salt Marsh Farm, uh, that we share all, all around the whole year at, at Chewanke. We will continue our legacy of teaching canoeing and other watercraft skills. We will learn our outdoor living skills while at camp. And we will, of course, be building community together the way that we always have at Girls Camp. We'll be making our flags. We'll be doing our bead ceremonies. But what's different this next year is that we will get access to the challenge course that is out in Chewanke Neck, um, which is an incredible resource and a really exciting opportunity for our campers to access any one of the 18 um, low and high elements we have on Chewanke Neck. So really exciting new opportunities for us. Next slide, please. And of course, no summer would be complete without a trip experience. And that has been at the heart of the girls camp uh, at Chewanke experience for its entirety. Uh, that experience is really the culminating um, time for our campers. It's where they can really build off the skills that they've learned at camp. Our campers will be taking part in a trip progression that builds in difficulty level and length of the trip at every age as you progress. When you start as a puffin, you'll be doing a one night camping experience on Chewanke Neck. And when you get up to the age of an osprey, you'll be out on the trail for almost two weeks, uh, which will be an incredible experience to get you ready for a three, three week leadership expedition, if that's what you want. Um, and that next age group is gonna be the loon age group. So you'll be ready to go from osprey to loon after you have your camp trip experience. Next slide. So the good stuff, uh, we are looking right now at a map of Chewanke Neck where Girls Camp has found its permanent home, as Nancy said. So to orient yourself a little bit, we are hovering over the peninsula right now, looking in a northern directed direction with the points sort of not in view a little bit below the screen. If you look at the screen, you'll see that you'll, uh, the, the drive comes through, passes the salt marsh farm, and there's a little bit of a turnaround near the Center for Environmental Education. That's going to be our new dining hall. And if you move to the right from there or the east from there, you'll see in a wonderful line, five beautiful cabin roofs and that is surrounding the, the grassy gathering space of our new girls camp campus, that east side campus. Uh, you'll also notice the wash house just to the south and the um, director's cabin on the western edge of that gathering space. 
we will be sharing that space on the farm. Uh, we will be sharing uh, the challenge course. And if you look over to the west side of campus, you'll notice a little peninsula sticking out. And that is where the Girls Camp waterfront will be located. Um, we can't wait to get in the water. Awesome, thank you so much. We are gonna now transition to a more in-depth view of all of those things from the ground instead of the sky. So we are gonna be getting ready to share with you a video tour of the East Side campus. Hang tight while we get it ready for you. Hello and welcome to Chiwanki. My name is Emily and I'm the director of Camp Chiwanki for Girls and I'm here with Nancy, Charlie, and Jen. And we are super excited because we are walking to the new Eastside campus where Girls Camp will be located this coming summer. We cannot wait to get over there and show you all of the amazing new things that we have in store. Come on. I'm standing here on the gathering space and it's surrounded by our new buildings. First off, we have a director's cabin for our support staff to live in during the summer. Next, we have our wash house, which contains an incredible composting toilet system called the Cliva system. Jen will be talking to you a little bit more about that in just a few minutes. And last but not least, we have five new incredibly beautiful cabins for living in. Each of them has been crafted with care to be an incredible space for you to lay your head down at night when you're at camp. We're gonna start our tour off there. Come on, let's go check them out. I can't wait to show you one of these cabins. Each one of them can house eight campers and two leaders. Come on in, let's see inside. I'm super excited to show you this building. It's split into two sides. This side over here are our new showers. Come on over. Inside you can see each stall with an incredibly beautiful window up above. On the other side we have our bathrooms. There's an incredibly large sink area and we have private stalls for each of the toilets. If you look inside, it looks pretty much like the bathroom that you might have at home, but I've been told by my friend Jen that there's something special about oh. these. Oh! Hi, Emily! Oh, oh. I should go to the bathroom! Hi, Jen! Were you talking about the Clivus Multrum toilets? I was! What's so special about them? I'm so passionate about them. These toilets are just like your toilets at home, except the difference is that they use almost no water. When you go to flush a toilet, like at home, you just push a button on the top of the toilet, and foam comes out. And the foam is what brings the product downstairs. Ooh, should we check out the downstairs? Certainly. I'm excited, let's go. Come on in, Emily. If you look over here, all of these white pipes coming down from the ceiling, a toilet is directly above them. All of the material that goes into the toilet 
comes down these white pipes and is stored in these big black containers. Emily, are you ready to see what's inside? I'm a little bit nervous. I was actually expecting it to smell bad down here, but it actually smells pretty nice. <laughs> That's so interesting that you pointed out, Emily. It smells like wood chips. Yeah. That's the way we maintain the environment that the bacteria and the red wiggler worms like to maintain. <laughs> Let's open it up. I'm so excited. Whoa. So even though these toilets haven't been used yet by a whole bunch of folks during the summer, this will be really similar to what it looks like even when there's a whole lot of poop in here. <laughs> wow. So this is wood shavings. That's what we smell mostly, and that's what we'll keep smelling over time. And eventually those worms that I mentioned, they eat the wood shavings, and, and then they start decomposing and all of the decomposing gases and water is either taken out by the water pump or goes out through the air vents. Wow, this is a pretty amazing bathroom. I actually think it might be the best smelling bathroom I've ever been in. <laughs> I agree. One cool fact about this, it has to do with a little bit of math. Okay. Over five years of these being used over the summer, and that's a lot of use, they'll only need to be emptied out once. Wow. And you only take out about half of the material, which looks just like the wood shavings. And how can you think, how can that much stuff fit in these little boxes? There's a 95% reduction in mass. Whoa. And that includes all of the toilet paper that goes in here. Wow, so we're really reducing waste. It also seems like we're really reducing the amount of water that we would use. Yeah, each flush that you use upstairs only uses three ounces of water. Wow. These toilets are really, really my style. Very yeah. chwonky, very sustainable. I think it's time that we look at some other places that the girls campers are gonna be using next summer. Come on. Hi, Emily, welcome to the farm. Hi, Nancy, I'm so excited to be here. Something I'm really, really happy about is that because girls camp is now on Chwonky Neck, we get to have regular activities here on the farm. This is one of my favorite friends on the farm, Bob the Horse. He's pretty wonderful, and I'm really excited for you all to meet him this summer and to actually help learn how to use him to do some of the work that happens here on the farm. Should we go see some other parts of the farm? Let's do it. Bye, Bob. Bye, Bob. Look at this mural, Nancy. It's all about the different systems on the farm, and the farm is really where we learn about where our food comes from. So I can't wait for next summer when girls campers will be here harvesting vegetables from our farm and eggs and milk to eat in the dining hall later in the day. It's truly wonderful to harvest your own meal. Delicious. Let's go see some other parts of campus that girls camp will be using next summer. Great. Hi Charlie. Hi Charlie. Hey Emily, hey Nancy. Oh my gosh, I love being down here on Hoyt's Point, and it would not be a summer at Chewonki without spending time on and in the water. Yes, I can't wait for the girls camp waterfront to be finished because this is where the campers will be doing their polar bears in the morning, their general swim in the afternoon, and where they'll be practicing paddling their boats. I can't wait till the waters are full of kids swimming and paddling on this salt marsh and on this stream. Woo! Should we dive in? Let's go! Here we go. <laughs> chilly fall waters, we're going to head to the new girls camp dining hall. Come on! I'm standing here in the newly renovated kitchen inside the Center for Environmental Education, where all of the meals for girls camp will be served next summer. We are so excited to be having this amazing space to create delicious food that mostly comes from our farm for campers to eat. Next, we'll take a look at the dining hall. Here we are in Chapin Hall, or the Whale Room as we like to call it. Right now it's being used by our elementary and middle school, but come summer, this hall will be full of round tables and lots of campers eating delicious meals under an incredibly cool fin whale skeleton. Next, we're gonna head outside to the challenge course where campers will be building up their cabin communities. Let's go. Welcome to the perch, Charlie. 
Here we are up in the canopy of the forest where around us is Chihuahua's Challenge Course, which the girls camp will be using this summer. It is so much fun to come here and build community with your cabin mates and learn to communicate to overcome challenges. Yeah, on the 18 different high and low elements we have here on the Challenge Course, each cabin will get to spend time before or after their trip and it will be a wonderful opportunity for them to have some fun while facing some pretty serious heights. <laughs> Next, we're going to head to the girls' camp, Campfire Circle. But first, we have to climb down. We finally made it! We're here at the girls' campfire circle, where all summers begin and end, and where we spend so many happy times singing, laughing, and uh, being with each other. I want to close our tour today by hearing from each of us what's something you're most looking forward to about next summer. Who wants to start? Hearing the laughter of campers. Singing around the fire. Polar bears at the new waterfront. I can't wait until I look out on the field, the gathering circle, and see campers there filling up our brand new girls camp. Thank you all so much for taking the tour with me and thank you for joining us. We can't wait for summer 2021. Bye. Bye. Wow. Thank you all so much for hanging with us on that really awesome tour. I am going to head it, uh, hand it off to Nancy. Great. Thanks, Emily. Um, my job is to give thanks to those who made this amazing campus uh, possible. Uh, one of the things that we spend a lot of time with at Camp Chwonky is appreciating one another. So here goes. I want to appreciate um, the support of generous donors and our awesome architects. I want to appreciate the master planning leadership group and process and our fantastic board and trustees. Um, thanks to the talented Schwanke Land and Buildings Committee and our wonderful current and past staff, some of whom are on this call, uh, many hardworking and skilled contracting teams. We appreciate our super facilities team and 20 years of amazing young girls and women who inspired us to keep growing and sharing these experiences and so many, many more. And thanks to all of you for joining us uh, for this uh, sneak preview of Camp Chwonky for Girls. Charlie? All right, we've got some awesome upcoming events to, uh, to whet your appetite for next summer. Uh, first of all, registration is open for camp and we, have, we already have our first uh, group of girls campers enrolled for next summer. So if you or someone you know would like to join us next summer, you can apply at campchwonky.org and check out our brand new website. Uh, we also have an upcoming town hall event where uh, you can join us for a conversation with President Willard Morgan to talk a little bit more in detail about the process of building the Girls Camp campus and learn a little bit more about the future of Chihuahua. Uh, that Those dates and times are TBD, so make sure to check back regularly uh, uh, in the coming weeks. And then last but not least, we had a great time, such a great time this summer with Camp Chihuahua at home that we have decided to continue having those live events and we're going to have them every third Thursday of the month from now through May. And we're starting this Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, so make sure uh, that uh, you're telling your campers to RSVP. You can also find uh, that link on our website in the families section. Back to Emily. Awesome. Thank you so much, Charlie. We are going to open it up for questions and answers. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, if you would like to ask a question, you can put it in uh, the Q&A or, or the chat and we can answer it. We have a question from Jonathan Lamb who asks, are you going to put in any docks or other construction at Hoyt's Point? Fabulous question. I can speak to that a little, but I think Nancy can speak to it in perhaps some more detail. Um, we are planning on putting in some infrastructure on Hoyt's Point that is in the works uh, so that we have docks for the girls to get out to the water, even when the tide is a little bit lower. Uh, Nancy, do you have any other details you'd like to share? I'll hit the Q&A instead of my mic. Um, uh, yes, Emily, you're right. The, actually, the docks, the docks are made. We take the docks out of the water every season, um, given that 2020 
Uh, we didn't actually use the waterfront. Uh, the docks didn't go in and come out again, but they're set aside for us. And there will be some sort of staging area, a, a, a privy out, out down near where we will be um, swimming. Um, not out on Hoyts Point, but um, yes, we're, it, there'll be minimal um, infrastructure, but for sure infrastructure needed to support the campers down there. Thanks so much. That was a great question. I saw a raised hand, but I think it went back down. Maybe it didn't. I'm looking. Oh, Rebecca Adams, would you like to ask a question? Oh, unfortunately, we can't uh, have you unmute, but oh wait, perhaps we can. But if you'd like to type it in, that would also work. There's also a, a message in the chat, uh, an answer, a uh, question. Fabulous. Thank you so much. I see from Kate Bramer, will both camps ever come together? What a fabulous question. And it's a question that we get um, often. So the short answer is yes. Uh, the longer answer is that we have intentionally looked at the schedules and spaces of Chewankee Neck to make sure that we are preserving the um, specific camp communities that we intentionally create each summer. So Camp Chewankee for boys, Camp Chewankee for girls. Um, but because we are going to be sharing resources, there will be times when the camps will come together, sometimes in informal settings, passing each other by, and sometimes in more formal settings. Um, we are hoping to be spending some days celebrating the whole Camp Chewankee community together. Uh, and so those are days in which we will expect campers will be spending time together. Great, thank you so much for that question. If there are any more, we'd be happy to take them. We have a question in the Q&A. Okay. Do you welcome semester school alums to apply to be counselors? Oh my gosh, we really, really do. <laughs> we really, really do. Uh, we welcome anyone and everyone to apply to be counselors because everybody has something to add to our community. But if you have been a part of the Chewankee community in other ways, um, you might feel inspired to come and pass along sort of the experience you got at, at Chewankee to, to younger campers and to younger children. So that's always a, an incredible um, a, an incredible opportunity for you to come back to Chuanki, but also for us to welcome back somebody who really cares about um, the experience that we want to provide. So if if you would like to apply to work and you are an alum, please, please do. Great. What is the girls camp campus used for when camp is not in session, for example, during fall, winter, and spring? That is an excellent question. And I wonder if, uh, if Jen Adams is still here, if she might want to answer that because I feel like she knows, knows more than I. Certainly. Uh, essentially, it's a little bit, uh, we're going to be using it for a lot of different things. Um, outdoor classroom might be using it we might be using uh, the guides to support elementary and middle school programming um, a couple of days, essentially using it as, as a base a little bit further away from what we typically call the main campus um, as is, is to house uh, maybe chaperone staying overnight. Um, but we were, are certainly trying to find more uses for it and that it, it is a great area for What pro so we have a question from Kate Shaughnessy. What program fits best for a rising 10th grader who happens to be just 16 when summer starts? Just the leadership expeditions? What a fabulous question. Uh, thank you so much, Kate. Uh, we are super committed to um, working with every family to figure out what program is going to be best for them. And age is usually an indicator to help us get started, but it's not the only criteria. So for a camper who is 16, we would typically start by looking at the leadership expeditions because that's the age range that that those campers usually fall into, do those programs. Um, but 
uh, if for some reason the residential full session camp is um, the, the program that is what will suit, serve them best, that's a conversation that we ha can have with, with each family to, to find the program that works best for them. Um, that's a great question. I also see one from Monique Barker. Will the girls get to go on walks with Doc Fred or will there be another naturalist? Oh my gosh, you have brought up uh, Camp Chawanki sparkling gem. Fred Chikoki, uh, Doc Fred, who is our naturalist and has been for the boys camp for many, many years. Uh, and the beauty of us being in the same space is that yes, Doc Fred is somebody who every camper on the neck is going to get to know and is going to get to experience things with. But because he is also just one person, we will be hiring additional naturalists uh, for the summer to help make sure that that amazing natural history education, those nature walks, um, all of those incredible things that Doc Fred does with campers can happen across the campus at both camps simultaneously. So a little bit of yes and a little bit of hiring someone else as well. Great. We have another question in the Q&A section. How do you accommodate for the lost skills from last year where girls are moving up but may not have the skill set for the extended camping trips? Do you place by skill or age? Another fabulous question. Um, I, I want to add into uh, the, the answer I just gave that as well as having a resource like Doc Fred for natural history, both camps have access to the traveling natural history program, uh, which uh, is home to many, many am amazing wildlife, but also naturalists who will be working with both, both camps. Um, to speak to the question about age versus skill, um, we do we are definitely taking it into account that there will be campers who have not really had a camping experience since the summer of 2019. And we have really thought intentionally about what is gonna be happening in camp before they go out on those experiences to help prepare them for that experience. So we wanna make sure that a child could come in at any age or skill level and still feel like they have a successful experience. Like I said earlier though, we are also happy to talk to each individual family about what stage of the, the um, program is going to be best for their child. So perhaps they're a year older than most in their age group, but that's the, the group that makes the most sense for them to be with. That is something that can definitely happen here at camp. Looks like we have a question in the chat about Packout. Uh, how has the Packout building evolved to support programs on the neck? can get uh, the pack out building is is currently still the same uh, physical location though we're certainly looking forward uh, to a new and improved outdoor learning center in the next couple of years uh, to meet the immediate needs of being more campers on Chunky neck as well as more programming in the fall and spring. we've added uh, and redone a, a couple of them are used to support both our staff and our campers. Um, so with that includes a couple new sheds to organize gear uh, that students are able to access and help trip leaders organize their gear departure and, and on their return, uh, as well as some new that help staff that prepare for, for their trips uh, with their kids. Great questions, everyone. Um, if you didn't see, there's also some incredible photos of our, our pack out extensions that, that Colin linked in the chat. So you can take a look at those if you'd like, um, as well as some tools for looking up what program might be the best fit for your, for your child. So use the age range to help, but, uh, don't, don't feel like it's a hard or fast rule. I see a question in the Q and A, will the girls have access to sailing? That is a really, really excellent question. Charlie, would you like to speak to that? Yeah, I can speak to that. So we are, as Emily mentioned earlier uh, in the slideshow, uh, we're working together to uh, evaluate all aspects of the program. And that includes looking at our watercraft program. Um, we are going to be most focused on watercraft skills that feed into the trip disciplines that we go on. And we don't currently have sailing trips. So um, we'll talk about how sailing might show up for boys camp and girls camp in future summers. Uh, we, we do have a plan for it. Um, so potentially. 
Exactly. Similarly, archery is a program that happened uh, his, has happened historically at Boys Camp, uh, and our our new campus currently doesn't necessarily have a space for archery. But that doesn't mean we won't be adding it in summers to come if that is something that our families are interested in and our campers are interested in. Ooh, a question from Fred Scott: What Chowanki traditions will be incorporated into the girls' camp and become part of their program? That is an excellent question. So. It's been really awesome to be able to speak with Charlie about what is it about this amazing 100 plus years of boys camp that has made it so wonderful and amazing for so long and those traditions are really a huge part of it. Girls camp has their own traditions that we definitely want to hold on to, but there are some things that the boys campers have done that are kind of fun and we want to take take for ourselves. So there is a tradition of these tent days that that boys camp takes um, where they get to get off campus and go explore other places along the coast. Um, girls camp will be adopting that same sort of thing into our schedule. So having special days for special excursions um, to places like the beach or to go to a farm to pick raspberries, um, incredible fun things like that. Um, there's also a tradition of a Sunday service or a time during the week for campers to gather and spend time in thoughtful reflection that's not quite as like raucous and fun as a campfire, but amazing in its own right. And that tradition is also something that girls camp will be taking on um, taking on uh, next summer. I know there's more and I'm, I'm uh, racking my brain, but uh, that, that's what's coming to mind for me right now. Charlie, if you can think of any as well, you can add them. Yeah, I think uh, we're we're chatting about all the different different ways that uh, the traditions show up across the years. So, um, yeah, I think echoing what Emily said, and I can't think of any else at the moment. Oh my gosh! Hello, Susan Kilroy Ames. Um, can you talk more about the overnight trips that the girls would take? Awesome. Thank you so much for asking. So I mentioned that there's a progression and that our Puffin age group, so um, those who are coming just for the 10 days, uh, they are going to be doing either one or two nights on or around Chewankee Neck. We have incredible campsites uh, around the periphery of our whole peninsula that offer up wonderful camping experiences that feel really remote, but are the right level of challenge for those kids at that age. Um, as they progress up, they will be doing successively longer trips and further afield. So the youngest age group for three weeks is owls. And at that, that age, those campers will be going on about a five or six night uh, experience. And one of the places that we know we want to send them is Deb's Kinnig Lake. So that is sort of the next level of the progression, um, heading up to our Deb's Kinnig Lake property and accessing the incredible woods and waters, the trails there um, to practice those sort of next steps of um, multi-day uh, overnight adventures and trips. Uh, beyond that, we start to get progressively longer and go to places like the Allagash River, um, as well as we hope some trips in Baxter State Park and in the Down East Lakes. So a mix of hiking and canoeing, and then at the oldest age group, an opportunity for some either whitewater or saltwater kayaking. Jen, did I miss anything or would you like to add anything? Jen is our, our uh, trips extraordinaire. No, that was a great explanation. Thank you, Emily. Yes, I passed. Great question. Thank you so much for asking it, Susan. Happy to wait. Uh, if any more folks have questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A. I just noticed that Cy Norton is with us. He was our incredible cook in 2019. We're so happy you're with us, Cy. Thank you. Um, Emily, while we're waiting for questions, I want to just um, uh, say to folks that um, if it maybe maybe many know, we are a nonprofit and we give back more than 20% of our revenue in financial aid each year. Um, the financial aid awards are 100% need-based and are independently evaluated. Um, and I encourage you to apply early. And also, probably Charlie already said this, but enrollment is open. A few of our cabins are full, yay! And um, we are, um, we are um, really excited to see um, new friends and old friends um, joining us. So um, 
just wanted to let you all know that. Thanks, Nancy. That's that's wonderful to add. Great. I'll wait a couple more moments here and see if there are any more questions. And if not, and you're having to, to head out on your, your evening, thank you so much for joining us. But we'll wait just a couple minutes more. I want to echo something that Nancy uh, said in the chat earlier. Uh, Jen, Emily, and myself are all available uh, to, to set up phone calls or video chats. Uh, you can find our emails on the website. We're happy to answer questions and talk about what program might be the perfect fit for uh, your child. Oh, curious about the new water, how the new waterfront area was selected. So I think that's a great question. And uh, the town hall with President Willard Morgan uh, will be a great time to ask more questions about the process of, of the, the construction of the campus. Thank you for asking that question. Thank you so much to Leslie Heil, who just uh, said hi. She's um, our site manager for Fourth Ebskineg Lake. We're really excited that girls campers will be headed back up, hopefully to see her next summer. Thanks for being with us. And thanks Jennifer Morgan for, for being here as well. So nice to have you, Monique. Thank you for being here. If you have any other questions, oh, I think I see one from Dave. Such a great job. Oh, thank you, Dave. I thought it was a question, but it was a compliment. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> great, I think give it a minute more and then we will say goodbye for the evening. How many campers can attend? Thank you so much for asking. So like I mentioned in the video, uh, our ideal cabin size is eight campers and, and that has less to do with the capacity of the cabins because they are quite roomy and more to do with the capacity of our wilderness trip experience and also um, making sure that we can offer the kind of programming that we want to for each camper. Um, so that means that in one session, we can have about 40, 48 campers. And in total, we will have 96 uh, spots for camp next summer. Fred Scott, my first summer at camp was as a six month old. Oh my goodness, good luck to everyone. Great traditions continue. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Fred Scott. Summer camp, I think, uh, has been a really, really important influence to all of us here, and and I can't, I, I can't believe how lucky we are to to be able to offer these opportunities for campers next summer, and to do it every summer, hopefully, and again. <laughs> oh wow! Thank you so much, Bart and Chris. Thank you so much, Sai. Thank you, Dot. We love you, Dot Lampson. Thank you for all you've done for Girls Camp Programming. So we have posted on our website our up and coming events, which we really would love to see folks at. Um, if you have any friends or family that might be interested in camp for next summer, we'd love to meet them. We don't uh, advertise. It's really a lot of word of mouth and um, we're trying to um, kind of broaden our entry into homes via Zoom this year, as we are not in the plains, um, but we'd love to meet uh, and, and talk about camp. Um, and of course, as you said, the directors are available to talk about the specifics of the programs um, and see as many folks as possible next summer on the neck. Thank you so much everyone for being here and, and thank you so much for your questions and for your support making Girls Camp uh, and this new Eastside Campus possible. Okay, have a good night everyone. <laughs> and with that, we'll call it a day. Thank you so much everyone. See you next summer. <laughs>